it says this, the United States of America guarantees every state in this union a Republican form of government. It doesn't say democratic form of government. It says a Republican form of government. Let me give you a little phrase about democracy that Benjamin Franklin was attributed to that saying. He says, a democracy is where we have two wolves and a lamb voting upon what to have for dinner. That's what a democracy is, just basically mob rule. The, the populace says what's going to go on. And they get into control and they just keep it at it. The, the ones who are in a minor, minority of their thinking don't have a chance. We don't have a chance. So we're going to try to get back from these folks. And we're going to, we're going to follow, what are we going to follow? The Constitution of the United States. It says in Article 4, Section 3, how to do it. It's been done four times before. The last time it was done was when Virginia in the Civil War said, we're going to go with the South. The guys on the west side said, wait a minute. We want to go with the North. So they split off. West Virginia split off from Virginia in 1863, during the middle of the Civil War. That was the last time Article 4, Section 3 was used. Okay, but first of all, we have to do that county by county. Each county decides for themselves if they want to join this separation movement. Now we call it, it's not secession. Secession means we're trying to take a star off of the flag. We're not trying to do that. We're trying to add a star to the flag. Add a star to the flag. So we call it separation or, there's a had another word. Yeah, but anyway, it's a separation thing, not a secession deal. So the way each county decides for themselves Actually, there's three ways to have it declared. See, these guys, these guys over here have, they're way ahead of us. Oh my gosh. They're years ahead of us in this movement because they've been mad at their brown longer than we've been mad at our brown. That's basically it. Of course, they've got a guy named Newell or something here now. But I guess he's just Newsom. the same. Newsom. Newell? Newsom. 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 Okay. So there, these, the green means they have declared. The yellow means with working committees. So we're behind them, but we're catching up fast because our brown is as bad as their brown. Or maybe worse, I don't know. Getting pretty bad here. So how do we declare? One way, well, first of all, you have to inform the populace of the county what's going on. You cannot do this without everybody knowing what's, what's happening. For instance, if you go to the commissioners and ask, that's one of the methods, you go to the commissioners and ask them to declare to leave the state and go with a new state. And, you know, they're not, they're going to, they're not going to vote for that right away. They're going to say, what do the people want? If I was a commissioner, I would. I'd say, what do the people want to do? Uh -huh. So we need to inform the people first of the benefits of separating. Now, there's only three commissioners in every county. So you only need a majority vote in every county. And that's two out of three. Pretty good. Really odds. So first, we need to build the groundwork. And have meetings like this. You folks who live here, where we brought a bunch of brochures, hand them out to folks, that sort of thing. It's up to you to get this done. It's up to you. The other method is, and we explored this method, is called an initiative petition. You can go to the state, you have to go to the state, this is a state program to have, to put the vote of the people on the May or November ballot, okay? And you need to have 
of the registered voters sign the petition, which the state supplies for you, including the title. They don't let us title it. They have to title it. Who knows if it's going to be the right title to begin with. <coughs> so, <clears throat> and you have two years to gather these signatures. So, um, we kind of thought, boy, they had a lot of regulations in this thing. So we decided in Josephine County, where we live, not to do that yet. And we had a lot of work yet to do in informing the, pop the populace about this. So that's what we're doing. A third method you can do, and one of those sheets that over there is a support statement where you support leaving the state with your county. It has a county of that, that you live in at the head of it. So here's how there, five of these counties here went to their, well, they call them supervisors. That are, there's five of them. We have three commissioners, same body. Just five of them went to their, their supervisors and had them vote on it. The rest of them did this. They got a support statement signed by this many people in each county. What they say is, you have a body of, what do you got, 210,000 here in, this, in Jackson County? About. So they said, well, about half of those are probably registered voters. About half of those actually voted in the last election for governor. So get about half of that. And it'll be how many signatures you probably need to just say we have we the people have declared. Okay, that's the third method, and that's what all, almost all of them did. There's 23 of them here. 22 of us up here. 22 counties. So out of the 36 counties in Oregon, at least 14 left in Oregon when we separate. I think it's going to look just like that. Now we can join together. But we have to separate individually because this says so. In Article 4, Section 3, when we do this, when we get our declarations, then we send it to Sacramento. They send it to Sacramento. We send ours to Salem. There's three copies that need to be sent. <clears throat> one to the Secretary of State, one to the um, Senate leader or some whatever he is, and a house leader, okay? So three, three copies go there. And now we can do it. What they did, they did it whenever a county declared it just got sent to Sacramento. We can do it that way. The reason why they did it that way is because they felt that they would get more press each time one of them did it. I don't know. We could gather them all at once after we've got all the declarations and then send it in for more clout? It's up to the counties. We'll, we'll talk about that later. We really don't know how we're going to do it exactly. Okay. Uh, I wanted to point out something. This representation, I call it the non-representation banner. They have it even worse here. We have 30 senators and 60 representatives in the state out of 36 counties. They have 58 counties in California, 40 senators and uh, 160 representatives. No, that's not right. 40 and 80. 40 and 80. So 120 representatives all total. They had it so bad in representation that out of the upper, this is the upper one third of California, not much population, though, not really. I'll talk about that in a second. They have nine representatives to 111 down below. Nine to 111. They, had, they don't, don't have a chance. It's even worse than what we've got. We don't have a chance either, as we're finding out. Oh, 
I'll get to the populations. Out of 39 million people in all of California, there's 2.7 million here. Pretty sparsely populated, really. But not as sparsely populated as we will be. 4 million people in Oregon, 3 million up there, 1 million in the rest of it. So if we join together, and we don't have to, but that's the plan, we separate individually and then join together later. So the population of the whole, it will be much bigger than it was before, but less population total, total enough. So it would be very, very sparsely populated, really, which is okay. I'll talk, what, talk about later why I think it's okay. Anybody have any questions so far about all that? Okay, let's get into the Article 4, Section 3. So, we gather all of our declarations, we send it to, to Salem, and those guys look at it, and they vote on it. It says so. The legislative body votes on it from the state. The governor's not mentioned. Governor does not sign it, just the legislative body only. If they say yes, then it goes to the Congress of the United States. The president does not sign it. So he's not mentioned in there, neither is the governor. So, but the Congress votes upon it. Okay, that's how it works. That's, that's the steps for doing all of that. Questions? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Two of them. You made it sound as if the state legislatures in these state would have to let the counties go. I mean, we know they'll never do that. We're their possessions. Well, we've thought about that. Here's what we have to do. We have to be a pain in the butt that they want to get rid of us. <laughs> I'm serious. We have to be like that. Because here's something I just saw recently. Let's see if I can remember what it was. Hmm. I probably have it in my briefcase and I'll have to search through it to find it. There was a state law that anybody, oh, that's, that's what it was. Anybody who votes a bond up at, on a bill in the state legislature or a governor signs that is against the Constitution, they can have a fine imposed upon them. Mm -hmm. They can be fun. We need to be doing things like that, putting pressure on them to stop doing the stuff that they're doing, which is against the Constitution. We have means to do that. Oh, I remember what it was. It was 18 Code 242, U.S. Code. Yes? I think you just answered my question. I was wondering which Constitution yeah, it was the U.S. Constitution. Yeah. Well, we're trying to make laws up there against the guns. That's definitely against the Constitution of the United States and Oregon. They both have the same reading. Both of them are the same. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, I was wondering. Okay, so uh, the you know uh, the California group has had some difficulty too in getting, you know, even the declarations read by the Senate, the House, the other people necessary to take and even acknowledge those declarations. If yes, that's true. If they don't acknowledge our declarations, then of course, if, you know, I was speaking to Mark and he said, then we basically got to sue them to make them read them. And then that's going to take a push it in California right to the yeah. Ninth Circuit, which we're under the same stipulation. Yeah, see, what I've observed is that yeah, us, us conservatives are too nice. Right. And the liberals are not nice, it looks like. Yeah. So we have to be on the not nice side and be a thorn in their side and do what we, what we have to do to be a pain in the butt. Yeah. What are some of the suggestions that you have for us to be a pain in the butt? And the other question I had is how many of those yellow sp spaces up there in Oregon have signed declarations at this time? Any? None of them have okay. because we're, we're way behind these guys. And these guys, 
boy, are they, man, yeah. man, they're really going like crazy. But you're right. Here's what, let me talk about that, okay. what you just had said. So these guys sent their declarations to Sacramento, and guess what kind of an answer they got? Nothing. Nothing. They, they didn't get, get an answer at all. Mm -hmm. They completely ignored them. I mean, completely. They didn't even, even acknowledge that they received it, those declarations. So what did they do? They filed a lawsuit. The lawsuit was called Lack of Represent, this is the name of it, Lack of Representation and Dilution of Vote. That's the name of it. So they filed it in Circuit Court District, what is it, Ninth, Ninth Circuit Court. Yeah. Well, the reason why they did it, because the attorney says that we have to go, we don't want to go to a state court, we have to go through a federal court, and here's why. He says, I've been before the, the Supreme Court four times, and I've won three of them. If we can get before the Supreme Court, we'll win this case. And here's how we get there. We file it and set it in federal court. He says, if we lose in the circuit court, the, the first court, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We appeal, and it automatically goes to the Supreme Court. Okay? If we win, which he didn't think we would because of who they are, then they will appeal, and no matter, it still goes to the Supreme Court. So he's feeling pretty good about that until this happened. Judge Mueller, lady, was the one who received this lawsuit. And you know what she's doing? She didn't like it, so what she's doing, she's sitting on it. A year and a half now, no motion, no movement. It seems like when the government doesn't like what you're doing, they, they ignore you. And that's what's happening. They ignore you. Okay, I'm going to talk more about this, how they ignore you a little bit here. Let's talk a little bit about um, <clears throat> finances. Okay. Are we financially viable? There's three iterations to this thing. The first iteration, I'm going to call it iteration. Okay. The first one is, we're going to be a smaller government. Let me give you some comparisons. The first one is, California has 547 different state agencies, which is even more than the federal government at 331. Oregon's not so bad. We have 170 different state agencies. But we will reduce that because we want less government interference on our lives in the new state. We're going to reduce it to about 50, maybe less. Because we want personal freedoms that they're not giving us in Salem right now. They just want to control our lives. and we. Don't, we just don't like that out here. They, it seems like, you know, that the uh, urban vote, they kind of like more government. The rural vote, they like less government. It just seems that way. So that's that's why we're doing what we're doing. Yes. So uh, how do you how do you keep those um, those numbers down? the state agencies down when you probably are going to have a bunch of stuff coming down from the federal government that you have to comply with. We will not comply. Okay. For instance, I'm going to talk about how we want to have the counties make have more money in their pocket so the schools don't have to have any federal funds at all. So they don't have to have, the, if they don't get federal funds, then they have no strings attached to it, like Common Core. Okay? I'm going to talk about that. Any other questions on this before I move on? I was just curious, Bob, if, if Mark and the California group are able to finally get Mueller to make an opinion on... Can't She's going to have to. Right. But then at that point, and then doesn't that opinion reflect back directly for us to stand on moving forward? 
See, what they have to do is this kind of a case has to go to a three-judge panel. Okay. And she's just holding on to it. Not, she's, she, she said this has to go to a three-judge panel in the very beginning. But then a week later, somebody talked to her in the meanwhile and says, you know, and then she started holding on to it and not moving on with it at all. Then can't you refile with someone else? Well, they did file a writ of, writ of mandamus to the, to the Supreme Court to try to get her to move on it, but they didn't, they didn't do it. <coughs> yeah. We need a friend with deep pockets. We're talking about money. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, is uranium one located somewhere? Yes, it is. Area? Yep. Interesting. Mm -hmm. might, might be worth looking into. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, let's talk about the government of, you know, the size of it. For instance, there won't be any welfare department because we're going to go back to the way it used to be before government took a cold control of that thing and, and just went crazy with it, where service organizations and churches took care of those folks. That's the way it used to be until government went out, out, of, out of control. Yeah. Who's this we you keep referring to? Don't decisions like that need to come from the populace? Yes, they certainly do. So who is we? All of us. You will have a say in all of this. Okay, those decisions aren't made then. Not, just not all of them. What you, would like, what you who get active would like to see. Pardon? In the Constitution. Oh, she wants me to talk about the Constitution. No, I'm saying that that was in the Constitution. That is proposal that I have. You probably, she read the Constitution. I just kind of went through it a little bit. That's my wife back there, Carol. She was talking about the Constitution that's in it. That's, we'll state who the we is and what, why. Okay. Well, I skipped this, over if this happens, we, there'd have to be a constitutional convention. And it's already been one. This is called draft. Mm -hmm. Who Constitution of the great state of Jefferson. Was it just the... <coughs> they did it down here because states? they're so far ahead of us. Yeah. Okay. We don't have anybody up here yet who's mm -hmm. like these guys and really in it. They had a constitutional advisor. So your reference to we is more like your reference it's, to... It's more them. like them because... Yeah. Let me tell you why we'd be good with them when we join together. They know what bad government looks like. They know. They want to get rid of that stuff. Yeah. So I'm okay with joining up with these guys, but it may not happen. We may just have South Jefferson and North Jefferson. Possible. We may not join together, but we can. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about the government itself. It's going to be much smaller. Let, oh, <laughs> this is something I suggested to the Constitution Committee, and they took it and really run with it. Oath takers, I call them. When they take office, I hereby solemnly swear to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, for foreign and domestic, so help me God. And I haven't even read this. They don't know what's in it. They don't care. Because we haven't asked them to know what's in it. Okay? Now the government requires us to take a test on most things. Most occupations have a test. Uh, a driver's license. You have to know how to operate the vehicle. You have to pass the test. Be proficient in what you do. So I, I said, let's ask those folks to be proficient in what they do. So they made a new deal that says, they actually made, you know how governments have three branches? <coughs> State of Jefferson will have a fourth branch called the Constitutional Review Committee Board. Constitutional Review Board. Made up of constitutional scholars. And they, they give the test to these oath takers. And they can't take office. Actually, they can't even get on the ballot 
until they pass this test on the Constitution. Okay? Now, bills that are submitted. The legislative body only meets 90 days out of the year. We just want less laws imposed upon us. And each legislator can only submit one bill per year. One. Better be a good one. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on that? Yeah. Can we demand that we have the legislators and senators serve only uh, serve term limits? Because I don't really like the idea of having legislation uh, representatives <coughs> and senators from being uh, from 1970s like Chuck Schumer, Nancy yeah. Pelosi, and so on. Yeah. Um, they never. They haven't mentioned term limits at all yet. Okay. Here's here's the reason why. Let's let's go back to this map here. What if we had one state senator for every county now, like it used to be? What would the political climate be in Salem? The House of Representatives represents basically the urban population, so that house would say, we want to get rid of all guns, because we just don't like them here in Portland. Nobody in Portland likes them either. So, they would vote upon a bill to get rid of them, which they're doing right now. But, 22 of the 36 counties are all represented by Conservative folks, every one of them are conservative. Okay? So they're going to say, these 22 counties will say, wait a minute, we're not going to vote for that in our house, the Senate. So it'll fail right there. Won't even get to the governor for signature because it won't go anywhere. That's what we would have with fair and balanced representation. Um, now, remember I told you that these guys are really good folks? They are, all of them, but they just are outnumbered. They can't do anything. My representative, Carl Wilson, who is the House Minority Leader, okay, and he, he's read my paper. I submitted it to him two years ago. And the one on the Reynolds versus Sims and why it changed everything. And he looked at that and he says, you know, I'm going to submit a bill. And he did. HJR 6, in which we have one state senator for every county, the way it used to be. But he said, you know, they won't like it up there. So it won't go anywhere. He was right. They didn't like it up there. It went nowhere. <clears throat> so it didn't happen. HJR 6, is, I, that's in my paper, so don't need to write that down, really. It, it's, put that in there, so you, you have reference to that. But, see, that's, that's when I learned that politicians who are in power don't really care about fairness and balance. They just care about keeping their political power. That's when I learned that. Okay. So they have the power, and they don't want to give it up. Carl Wilson said at a meeting, even before they had the three-fifths majority or whatever this is, the super majority that they have, this is about four years ago, he stated in a meeting that I was in, he said, you know, I might as well not even go to Salem because whatever they want up there, they get. Whatever we want down here, we'll never get. You know, when our own representative is giving up, he says he's not giving up. Hey. You know, when he doesn't have a chance. He doesn't have a chance. Until we change something, he'll never have a chance. We need to change it to fair and balanced representation like it used to be. That's what we're going to do. One state senator for every county. Now, going back to your term limits thing. Here's why we don't really need to worry about term limits. Because we're going to have a more House of Representative people. Each county will have at least one House of Representative member. And there's going to be the ratio, I think we have, a, right now it's one for every 12,000 folks. 
I forgot, I think it's 31 to 33,000 right now. Something like that. Don't remember exactly, maybe off. But we're going to change it so we have more representatives per, per person. So now when you, when you have more of those folks, you kind of know that guy because he's living right near you. So you can vote the bum out. If you don't like him, you don't need to worry about some, some uh, what's the name of the lobbyist getting a hold of him because you know him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here's the uh, another iteration of the finance. And that's right here. You guys have a card on there. This, this is from the American Lands Council. This card. The American Lands Council um, is out of Utah. Ken Ivory, a state legislator in Utah, he's the one who came up with this, this organization. Okay, let's talk about what's happening first. When you look at that card, you see they, they, it's split down the middle with the western states and the eastern states. Most of the western states is under federal control. They don't own it. They think they own it, but they don't. It's federally managed, but publicly owned. This says how it's to be. The Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, specifically says they cannot own that. There's only certain items in there that they can own. Ten miles square, Washington, D.C. That's Clause 17 of Article 1, Section 8. Ten miles square, wharves, dockyards, uh, military installations, and I forgot what else. But that's the kind of thing that they can own. And they can only own those lands that the state says that they can own within that state. They can't just take it, which they do, though, and people don't. Why do they get away with it? Nobody reads this. That's, what, that's the problem. And nobody reads this. Nobody reads this. Yeah. They, they don't know enough about it to say, to stand up to those folks and say, you can't do that. Just like with Earl Warren in 1964. Nobody stood up to him and said, you can't do that, Earl. The Constitution says that what you're doing is against it. You can't do that. But he did it because nobody stood up to him. So we, it's our fault. It's our fault that this, all this is happening. Okay. Where was I? <laughs> <laughs> I got a finance. side track for the Constitution. Money, finance. Oh, the money, the money, okay. This here, okay. Now, why is it this way? It, because back east, you know, less than 4% of the lands back east are federally controlled. Oregon is 53%. Utah, 69%. Uh, Nevada, 81%. Most of Nevada is controlled by the federal government. And you know why they instituted uh, gambling in Nevada? Because they had no tax base. They had no way of bringing in funds until they did that. That's why they do it. It brings in people spending money. But uh, before that, they were poor. Because why? Federal government held on. Now, let's talk about um, Benton, Senator, Senator Benton. Yeah. Anybody know the name Benton? Should, if you're Oregonians. Benton County, Corvallis area. Okay. Benton County was named after Senator Benton from Missouri. From his, he was from Missouri. From about 1812 to about 1831, something like that. He said, you, the federal government, are depriving my state and I think 12 others, I have the list here, of 
um, how would he put it? I got it. He says, cannot adequately fund education, we cannot grow our economies, cannot responsibly manage our abundant resources. He submitted a bill every year for, for 29 years to get the federal government to release the lands from Illinois, Indiana, Kansas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida because they were held by the federal government, 90 to 95 percent of those states were held by the federal government. And he finally got them to release it for economic viability in each state. It took him a long time, but he finally did it. That's why he was a hero to somebody who migrated to, to Oregon in the 1840s and named that county after him. So, what they're supposed to be doing, they're supposed to be releasing those lands to the states when they ask for them. I guess we haven't done a very good job of asking for them. But Utah has. Utah submitted a bill that went through the legislative body called the Federal Lands Transfer Act. And signed by the governor of Utah to be effective on December 31st, 2014. I think it was 2010 when they submitted this bill to them. And guess what kind of an answer they got? Nothing. They were completely ignored. So, and that's what the federal government does to you. They ignore you if they don't like what you're doing. So they make you go to court. So guess what the, uh, the Utah's doing? They're getting ready for a court case. And here's what the federal government hopes that you'll do. Run out of money eventually because that you can't fight them they have they can print money shoot how can you fight that <laughs> so they hope you just run out of money and go away eventually so bad situation but that's what we have okay ah now has anybody heard the, the terms equal footing doctrine Equal footing doctrine. Not many people have. But it's a well-documented thing. When the original 13 colonies formed the United States, you know, they said, looking to the west, there's a lot of land out there. Probably going to be some states come in. So we're going to let them come in as equals to us or lesser than us. They talked it over. They decided equals with us, and that's the equal footing doctrine. So let me ask you, how many BLM acres are within any of the original 13 states? You got it, zero. Zero. How many acres of national forest land are within any of the original 13 states? Well, nine have zero, three have a just a little smattering here and there. One has a little less than 4%. Okay. So overall, it's almost zero, just almost. So they said, we have, we have an, op an opportunity here with forming a new state to evoke the equal footing doctrine. We're telling them, you know, you have a certain status here of no federal lands within your borders. We want that status. And you told us we could have it with the equal footing doctrine. So we will take BLM lands and national forest lands and put them within state hands. Now we have local control rather than being dictated by on their policies from 3,000 miles away. So yeah, it's, it's hurting our forests because they're just sitting on it, not doing anything, letting them burn up. And we can get mills working again. We can probably get grazing rights back to ranchers who had them taken away by the federal government. So we can have a viable economy back once again. Now, you know what? I went and talked to Harney County. Those folks there, they're now have a committee. That was before they had a committee. 
And I, you know, I said uh, during the, my presentation, I said, you know, I heard that you guys have 40% of your population here in Harney County that work for the federal government. I said, how is that economically viable? You know, if you want to stay poor, you'll stay that way. Because there, the federal government is just a, an administrative body. That's all they are. They don't produce anything. I said, you're, you're, you get your wealth from your land. That's where your wealth comes from. You need control of that land. And so they said, no, it's not 40%, it's 50%. Work for the federal government here. Yeah. So that's why they're on board now with the state of Jefferson to get this thing changed. Okay. Now, did I say this was going to be easy? Mm -mm. It's not. Not going to be easy. We probably have to get out of our comfort zone a little bit to get this accomplished. And it's going to take a lot of work. Okay. So, any any further questions on this? Well, can yeah. I, what can I do to help turn my county from gray to gold? Yes. Very good question. Inform the populace. And we do that. We supply the, the brochures. We have already ordered 10,000 brochures this year, and it looks like we're going to have to order another 10,000 coming up shortly. We're down to the last box. But we have, I don't know, about 1,500 left or so. And we, we want you guys to have them in your hands. <coughs> they cost us about eight and a half cents a piece, but we're going to give you what you need tonight to get you going. Okay, we want you to be on board with this. Okay? And this, this paper that I've been given out, make copies all you want. Hand as many people as you want. And we have sign-up sheets there if you want to take one and make copies of it. Like the support statement, that's how you do it. You have people sign that. Yeah, join the committee. Yeah, and join the committee. Courtney is... She said, I will take this on. Good for her. Yeah, that's what we need. Sometimes you have people who come to me and say, well, what about the infrastructure? What about the state buildings that are in our city? What about the road grader that's down in the state, ODOT, the ODOT yard? Well, that's still that. Yeah, what about the bridges and the roads that are state-owned? Well... 30 or 40 years ago when California was another time, looking to split up into about five or six different states, the lawyers looked at that and said, hey, those people paid their taxes. They shouldn't go to the populated areas and the, all the, the original state because they paid their share. So they should be able to take those land, those, land, those facilities and have them right there. Okay? Now, what I kind of think we need to do, and I hope you agree with me, we need to have, in our universities, they have to take a class, or maybe a semester, or whatever it is, on the Constitution. How about our high schools? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe even high school, yes. Well, She's, well, they're getting away from that stuff? We need to go back to it. Civics is gone in our schools. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to be such a conservative-minded group, we could probably get it done. We probably can, because we're not going to be controlled by them. They do their thing, we do ours.